Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I've got yet another combo breakdown for Isanzo's 30th to 32nd dev blogs. So hey everyone, I know it's been a while, and I apologize for the delays, I've been traveling quite a lot, soaking up the last bits of summer, and have been away from my PC for quite some time now. But now I'm back, and I'm ready to talk more about Isanzo's related news. So this has just been a very info-packed few weeks, and it's just so much that I'm gonna end up tackling them in multiple videos going forward. So this first one is going to be on the dev blogs, which like I said, is number 30 to 32, which were about melee and showcased another map with a complete flyover. Now the gameplay you're seeing right now is from their Gamescom presentation with IGN, which will get its own dedicated video summary either tomorrow or the day after. Like I said, there's a lot of news and information to keep up with as we're coming up on the launch day, which is now only four days away, and these videos will act as the last bits of information to be tied up before release. So let's jump right into this. To start, let's cover number 30, which was just a few screenshots about Melee, and the first that was showed is the Bayonet. This is an iconic weapon in association with World War I, and it's expected for any game in this time period to have them. In Isanzo, they mentioned that the pulling out time for the bayonet was increased, so this should help it look a bit more realistic than in previous games. Then they showed off the independent melee weapons, which as you see here are the Arditi Dagger, the Trench Mace, and the Ice Pick. These lighter melee weapons will take place of your secondary weapon or tool, and are only available for the Mountaineer and Assault classes. Aside from those though, every player on the battlefield will have an entrenching tool for construction that can also be used as a weapon. While it won't be as fast as if you had the design melee weapons, it will still one-shot anyone who you hit with it. So that concludes the first dev blog, but now let's transition on to the next two, which just detail the map start to finish with an accompanying flyover which in my opinion is a great way to show us things pre-release. The Fjord map is a much more forested area with Austro-Hungarian attackers, which is a good change from the rock fields and urban areas we've seen so far. The first sector they showed off is a destroyed convoy, which is at the base of the main forested slope. This shouldn't be too difficult of an objective, but between here and the hillside houses, there are several forest trenches and defensive emplacements that will need to be pushed through. These seem to have a lot of cover and pretty narrow sightlines though, so it will probably go either way and doesn't look to be too one-sided overall. Then there's this small section of urban combat with the hillside houses, which multiple floors make it good for setting up MGs and using as firing positions. Now this seems like there's a lot of angles to flank around from the woods and snipe enemies in the objective, so once again it seems pretty balanced between the attackers and defenders. Beside the hillside houses, the second objective in this sector is a burned out field slash trench line that is actually pretty open, and I would guess that smoke will be very important for any major advancements by the attackers. But then again, the cover and terrain is very reminiscent of what we've seen in Verdun, so we'll see how it plays. Now once both these objectives are captured by the attackers, they'll need to push up another defensive forest slope to a patch of ruins, which is what we saw in the Vilar Perosa clip from a few weeks ago. Definitely one of the smaller areas, but looks to have some very gritty close quarters combat mixed in. Beyond this, they advance up out of the forest biome and into a more rock crested environment. The Chita de Rocha, or the Rock City, sorry for pronunciation, is a set of very unique looking limestone pillars and plateaus, which we saw a glimpse of in some prior gameplay footage as well, and it looks like a very interesting place to fight with so much verticality. The Italians will have several defensive emplacements up on top of these rocks and in the paths between them, so this will be another smoke heavy objective for sure. These rocky paths all lead up to a single supply cache objective that the attackers will need to destroy, which will have some underground tunnels into the mountain adjacent to it. Unfortunately, we didn't see any of the interiors of this in the map flyover, but I'm sure this is very tense to clear out. So after capturing the supply cache, there's an opening from the tight corners between rocks into much wider angled communication trenches. This is seen in the long connecting field between the cache and the final objective at the top of the mountain. With very little cover on the open plateau, it's expected to be a bloodbath of an objective, and with support enforcements like mortars, air support, and gas, this will be a mix of nose-to-nose -nose trench fighting and long-range sniping that we're already accustomed to from the other fronts of the war. But that's the last bit of coverage for the Fior map, and with only 4 days left till Isanzo's release, I'm going to be covering all the Gamescom footage that was shown and breaking down all the important bits between now and release. I've been doing these dev blog breakdowns since March of 2021, and to come all this way through every dev blog is really surreal to look back on. I hope this game is all that I've made it out to be, and thank you to everyone who's been watching all along the way. 
Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail here from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.